In this video, we're going to show you how to generate a barcode using CodeSoft. CodeSoft is a barcode label software from TechLinks, and it enables users to not only generate barcodes, but make their entire labeling process more efficient. So to get started, we're going to use the barcode generation wizard over here on the left in the object toolbar. It looks like a barcode. It's easy to see. So go ahead and just click on it and then click anywhere on the label uh, to place your barcode. So the sample comes up here and then the wizard shows you exactly what you're doing. So over on the left portion, you can pick from any one of the symbologies that we have in CodeSoft and it is a ton. So whatever you need, uh, we're going to be able to have that for you, whether it's for UPCs, um, for 2D data matrix barcodes, QR codes, any of the linear one dimensional, uh, one directional barcodes. Um, right now we're just going to use a 128, which is kind of the standard uh, across the board. You can fit a lot of different characters in it and uh, most commonly scanned kind of around the world. Um, we can use to populate this barcode fixed or variable data. Uh, we'll touch on variable data here in a minute, but right now we'll just use the default data we have in the wizard and hit finish. And then from there, we can see we have a good looking barcode with the check digit there on the end. That is just an element of the barcode itself. If we just want to display the data in the barcode, we can go into the properties, which will bring up the properties window for the barcode itself. And under the human readable portion, we can just uncheck that box that says include the check character. Don't worry about it. It's only for the scanner. So uh, say you want to adjust the font as well. We can adjust the font here in the character tab. Maybe make it a little bit larger for uh, anyone reading our label. So we can make that a little bit bigger up to 25. And then we can hit OK. So we have a nice looking 128 barcode with some fixed data in it, but that's not really going to help us when we're printing different uh, SKUs, different part numbers, uh, different information in the barcode without having to go into the properties, change the data, go back to print. It's a little bit of a hassle to do it this way, which is why um, one of the nice parts is actually linking it up with a data source. Uh, so what we're going to do here is actually create a when printed field. As you might guess by the name, this is a variable that data is entered at print time. So maybe we'll call this our part number. And then we can put a value in here to start. And I'll go ahead and change the data source of my barcode here and the properties. All the way here on data source and change it from fixed to variable. And then I'll go ahead and select my when printed field um, that has my part number in it. So a few things changed. Um, the data itself changed because the data is now being driven by this variable over here. Whatever is in the variable is going to be in the barcode. You also notice this kind of uh, overlay of one, two, three, four, five, six on top of the barcode. That is just for you as a designer to know that this is coming from a variable data source and it's not going to be printed as we can see here in the print preview. It still looks exactly like we need it to. So when it comes to printing, the nice part here is that when we go into the form, we can actually adjust the part number on the fly here. So say we want it to be four, five, six, seven, eight, and that'll adjust the barcode for us on the label without actually needing to go into the properties. So everything stays the same, like the font, the spacing, the size, all that stuff. We're just changing the barcode itself. And then we can go and print um, and do these in kind of rapid succession. So you might be thinking, you know, some of my part numbers are shorter, some are longer. How are we going to know uh, that it's going to stay on the label? Because the more data we've put into a barcode, the longer it's going to get. And as we get longer here, it could very easily run off of the label. The nice part about working in CodeSoft is we can go into the properties of the barcode and enable a function called fit to frame, uh, which will essentially just keep your barcode within a certain uh, width. So say, hey, we only want it to go up to three inches, never over three inches uh, based on the data that's filling in. So CodeSoft will automatically build our barcode based on the data that's in there. So now we have fit to frame turned on. We'll go into our print screen here. We can see it's within our range for sure. It's definitely under three inches. And then we can knock up our data length and see that CodeSoft is automatically adjusting the width of the bars in the barcode to keep it in check on our label so it will never run off. So that's a great example of a basic barcode. Uh, some companies need to create GS1 barcodes, which is a common standard in supply chain and medical device labeling. And CodeSoft has a really handy wizard for creating those as well. 
Uh, you can find that just under the barcode generation wizard. It's in this little arrow and then just click the GS1 wizard uh, right there. And then same as before, click anywhere on the label to place the new GS1 barcode. So GS1 barcodes are made up of different elements called application identifiers. And to get started here, we'll go ahead and click add and you'll see right away that there are a ton of different application identifiers you can use in a GS1 barcode. Uh, the ones that you'll need will be defined on internal specs uh, for creating the barcode. Um, for our example, we'll use the 01 here, the G10, which is pretty common in a lot of GS1 specs. Um, just as before, we can type in our G10 data statically here, and down below, CodeSoft does the hard work for you by putting it into the GS1 spec. Also, as just as before, we can use a when printed field to populate this data. Um, by hitting variable and creating another when printed field prior to opening up this wizard. We'll just stick with fixed for now. Um, we'll go ahead and hit OK and add it to our barcode. So we'll go ahead and add another identifier to our barcode to, to make it a little bit longer here. Um, we'll use a, an expiration date. And, you know, based on the list, whatever you're adding, um, it could be difficult to page through all the different identifiers. So you can just go ahead and search it up here if you know what number you need. Um, for Dates especially, there is a date variable here in CodeSoft that we can create uh, to populate this for us so it'll automatically pull from the system clock all the time. Um, right now, we'll just use a static to populate our barcode. Um, so that looks good. That fits the spec that we have uh, here internally. So we'll go ahead and hit OK, and the barcode will be generated on the label. If you find that you need to update your GS1 barcode, say we don't need that expiration date anymore, we can right click and go into edit GS1 data structure, uh, highlight it, and then just delete it. So now our barcode is still fitting to the GS1 spec without needing to create a new one. So something else that a lot of companies do is keep all of their data in a table somewhere, whether that's an Excel spreadsheet, an access database, or a database server, um, keeping part numbers and part information is pretty common in a database. Uh, something really cool you can do in CodeSoft is actually link that database onto the label into a barcode. So we'll go ahead over here to a database connection, right click, hit create edit query. And I'm just going to use one of my data connections I have set up already. Um, select my table, select part number, because that's what I'm interested in putting on the label in the form of a barcode. So I'll make some room for it here. So now my part number column is one of my data sources here in CodeSoft. I can just drag and drop it onto the label as a barcode. I'll adjust its placement a little bit. And now, as you can see, as I cycle through my records up here with this button, we can see what those would look like based on the records in my table. So now when I go to print, there's a new tab here called database. Um, that gives me my whole list of part numbers. I can print just the current part number that's selected. I can print all the part numbers in my table, or I can select just a few for this particular batch. So I can hold control and click only a select few that I need for this job. So you may want to put some other objects on your label, like text fields, images, or other shapes. CodeSoft has you covered here over on the left. And then once your design is complete, you can print it to any connected printer. TechLinks offers thousands of native printer drivers to enable accurate label printing. In this video, we've shown you how easy CodeSoft barcode label software makes it to generate barcodes. We also looked at a lot of helpful features CodeSoft has to enable efficient label design and printing. Visit techlinks.com slash CodeSoft to download a free 30-day trial.